on this week's delicious episode of the Fine Dining Podcast. You just see a dude with actual Popeye the Sailor Man proportions, like <laughs> giant forearms. Like, oh God, and, like, what's happening back there? Yeah. They're experimenting on them. Well, you can sue them now for all their worth and then own them. <laughs> no one's going to Popeye's and be like, oh man, I love that vibe. Hello, and welcome back to the Fine Dining Podcast, the search for the most mediocre restaurant in America. I'm your host, Michael Ornelas, and I am here searching for which chain restaurant is the most average of all of the ones out there. And I'm trying to reclaim the word mid because I myself am mid. People throw it around as an insult, and I am insulted by that. So I'm going to all these restaurants that, like, you know, they're not the best places out there, but they're reliable. Mm-hmm. And and I love them. <laughs> yeah, convenient. <laughs> They're, They're convenient. They exist. And they come with a lot of nostalgia. This week, we went to Popeye's, and I got to go with stand-up comedian Sierra Cato. She has a brand new comedy special, Funt, available on demand on Apple TV, on Amazon, on her website, sierracato.com. You can see it if you're watching on YouTube. These things will be on screen for your eyes Ooh. to feast upon. Uh, Sierra, welcome back to the Fine Dining Podcast. Thank you for having me back. Uh, you you know, wore the exact same thing as last week. Yeah, I made sure not to wash <laughs> it, so I think we're pretty much yeah, in the yeah, same yeah. position. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's wild. So if it's your first time watching the show, this is a review episode. It's part two. So last week we covered the history and Yelp reviews. This week we're going to talk about our experience eating at Popeye's, eating in, which, you know, Popeye's is a to-go food. I guess so. Let's be real. We learned that the hard we way. We learned that. So we're going to uh, talk about it and break it down based on three criteria. We're going to talk about it based on its atmosphere. Based on its service. And based on its food. Mmm, yum. Yeah. Yum. Yeah, we're going to jump on into that. But if you want more fine dining out today, my Sarku Japan Patreon episode. Sarku Japan is a teriyaki chicken food court spot that I grew up with and love and i'm super excited to bring you an episode on it so you can check that out at my patreon but otherwise fine dining party of two our table is finally ready oh so we're gonna jump on in theme song the table is ready follow me have you tried our chicken breast serving pancakes and ribs i recommend the spaghetti we're here to satisfy not to impress your table is ready Complimentary butter and bread These walls have growth signs Knick-knack, cowboy hat, good luck cat Autograph guitar, some crap from your city Behold the tchotchke of mediocrity Fine dining Yes, fine dining Fine dining Two letters on the sign are shining Meal flickering, irregular timing Identify the perfect five Out of ten Atmosphere. This is so clearly a spot. <laughs> like, like I said in the intro, I don't think this is conducive to dining in. No. To the point that I would say there is <laughs> very little effort put into the idea of the dining experience. Yeah, I, I feel like they were a little surprised that we were <laughs> Took dining a seat. in. Yeah, I think they they're were like, like oh, oh, we haven't oh. had this in a minute. Okay, what do we, we do here? We have seats, but they're for waiting. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of a decor situation. No, yeah, I, I would say other pop... Yeah, the, it's just such a small, you know, seating sure. area. So there's obviously not Maybe much. 10 tables, a lot of them for just two. Yes, and and they're, it's surrounded by windows. So in a hot summer day like it is today, it's like... You know, kind you're of in the fryer. Yeah, you're in the fryer <laughs> a bit. Yeah, you're you're eating fried chicken and getting fried. Yeah, yourself. Um, I took some pictures. Now, one of the things <laughs> before I even walked in that I noticed that I thought was interesting was there were a lot of signs. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Obviously, there's the big pole mm. that says Popeyes. You yeah. know, the big logo, standard. Got to have that fast food. Got to do it. Orange. Then, you know, you get the the sticky, big, like, vinyl posters on the window telling you of specials inside. Yeah. Go ahead. Standard fare. Yeah. You're allowed to do it. They all do it. All the fast food places have this. Mm-hmm. Then there's picket signs on their, like, tiny 
like two foot by five foot stretch of lawn where the big sign oh, stands out of. I they that. had four picket signs like game time is wings time ordered online at a sip of summer. Redeem your favorite food for free. Like it just. Oh, yeah. I did not see those. You're right. They're all different things. There's a QR code on one of them with no busy. Yeah, very busy. There's no <laughs> consideration of. Hey, maybe less is more. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can focus on one thing. This is more is more. (laughs) This is like, you know, when a kid gets really excited about a thing and then they just kind of yell at you about it for a while and tell you every piece of information they know. That was me as a kid with Goosebumps books (laughs) and Pokemon. Oh, yes. Pokemon. And like pro wrestling. And then Uh and then as an adult, it is still that with pro wrestling and Pokemon. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep going. But. I I mean, semi-related to that analogy, I took a test recently online Mm. that told me that I might be autistic and to look further into it. And I was like, that tracks. Like, Yeah, yeah. Maybe this is my version of science. (laughs) I just I I just talk (laughs) (laughs) in in detail. It works. It works. Okay, it works in some scenarios. But for Popeye's, yeah, it was a little hard to figure out what was going on. Yeah. And like what I should be reading. And like a lot of the signs were so unnecessary. Yeah. And th- it was like, there's so many of them that I was like, I'm focusing on none of them now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like a noise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And keep in mind, this is all still outside the oh, restaurant. Yeah, yeah. We, we haven't, haven't even walked in yet. <laughs> and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten signs on the door. What do we? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You like, honestly, I think I blew past that and just thought they were third party advertisements. But they're uh, all for it looks like only one. One of them is we deliver with uh, Fuja. Okay, but never heard of Popeye. I guess still related at least to Popeye's. Yeah. There's like a now hiring. There's no smoking, which like you have to put that. Sure. You know, and like you you get a few your hours. But like. This is too many. Ten signs. (laughs) On a small square of door. And then you go inside and the restaurant itself, the interior, I mean, the interior behind the counter. Yeah. Littered with more signs. And I did find it very funny that one of their signs had the word hate on it, which is just not a thing you see. Like, it's just not in the corporate language. The word hate. It was hate that we're running short. We might be running low on some of your favorite fixins. But we're working hard to stock up. Thanks for understanding. This is very low resolution. You know what? Now that because we did comment on this when we were there. And then when in last week's episode, we talked about like how they had stabbings and stuff because they didn't have the Popeye's (laughs) chicken sandwich. I'm like, maybe that sign is for that. It's like if we like match their hate and we say, we get it. (laughs) Fight hate with hate. Yeah, yeah. We get that. You hate us. Like maybe that'll help. So maybe that's what that sign is. Because I was really like that sign's doing nothing. Like why is that there? But uh, but now that I know the history of how much they've had to deal with like angry customers. (laughs) Look, we hate you too. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You hate us. Hey, well, we beat you to the punch by saying you we are hateable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's funny. But yeah, just but, the, the overall number yeah. of signs, a little overwhelming. And I'm going to go so far as to say it's worthy of an award. I'm going to give it this week's This Is Way Too Much Award. <gasps> this is Wow. Yeah, what an it, honor. It's, they're doing too much. They are doing too much. And I think it's to the point where like. I don't even know where to look. And then there's sort of a sense of, oh, this is new. Oh, wait, that's new. Wait, what? You know, there's a lot of like new things or like selling like, oh, this is the chilled lemonade iced tea thing. (laughs) Yeah. And they've got like five words to describe just like this is sweet tea. It was it's like (laughs) watching porn in the year 2000 and like three. It's just all those pop up ads. Yes, it's very just like I'm just trying to hit X so that I can look at the boobs. Popeye is the boobs. Give me the boob sandwich. (laughs) I need that. And. (laughs) sorry mom and dad who are listening like yeah yeah, i was was looking at that stuff at that age good to come clean now that you're in your 30s (laughs) yeah and and it's just like oh i think i got a virus from (laughs) from the amount of popeye's signs it was just way too much yeah it seems like it's working against their own cause which is to sell sell you stuff stuff. yeah but sandwiches what they really caused was just i dissociated yeah there was like, I mean, I guess I, if we're w- ready to get into it, no music. Oh, Can we talk about that. Yeah, okay, let's yeah. talk about that. So, I met you mm-hmm. 
for the very first time a minute and a half before we walked through the doors. In the parking lot. So, like, we haven't had a conversation before. No. We haven't developed a rapport, a a friendship, a relationship, like anything. Mm -hmm. And now we are thrust into the lobby where there is silence. Yeah, no no music, no ambiance. And we are left to discuss what we want. Me explain to you the premise of this show in right, a little right. bit more detail. Which was great. And uh, agree on what we want to order. You know, you don't seem like you're a very picky eater. You're just kind of like order whatever. Yeah, so th- yeah. I was kind of like, yeah, you take the reins, buddy. I don't yeah. know. But yeah, I, I mean, and then there were other customers uh, <laughs> there who were kind of standing around because I think they were, yeah. you know, wisely maybe, yeah, we're doing some to-go here. You could have um, heard a grasshopper fart it in was, there. Yeah, it was like, very strange because <laughs> I think, I, yeah, and I couldn't put my finger on it initially because I was just like, oh, maybe it's the fact that, you know, these other strangers are kind of standing around waiting for their food and I like, feel why like do, why do I, I felt weird. so uncomfortable and, and then, awkward. Yeah, and then you were like, oh, because like no music and I was yeah. like, oh, I didn't even clock that, but of course. But there's also like the I'm second guessing myself mm. with the ordering process because like I say a thing and then I just kind of like look back to you and oh, I'm like, yeah. is that OK? Sorry, I left you. I totally like hung <laughs> no, out no, to no. dry. I was like, was hey, fun. bud, you know. <laughs> yeah. But like I was like, am I ordering too much food? I don't know how much variety you oh, want to try. Oh, Are you right. comfortable sharing food with people? Because right, not right, everyone right. is. Sure. So it's just like all these things that like. It was a lot at once. Yeah. If versus... there was just like a little jazz. Just a little New Orleans Sweet jazz. jazz. Oh. I felt like I could have taken a second and just like us chatted right, for, right. for, you know, just a little short conversation of like, yeah, what do we want? But no, no. you just feel like you're, you're put so on the spot. Into it. It's silent. And it makes me wonder a question, Sierra. What? Like, there's no music. It's peculiar. Mm-hmm. And so it makes me wonder what's, what's going, going on, on over, over there. there? Sierra, what is going on over there? Why are they just sticking us in an environment with no music? So I heard about this. I think what happened is they had, you know, as we discussed, some stabbings, some <laughs> shootings. There were some problems. Right. Yeah. Anger issues across America. They've over got there. hate written behind them. Like, they, yeah, they had to put, put it they're on setting a, a mood. Um, and now they're like, it was the music. The music was instilling in people <laughs> anger, this hunger, rage, anger. And now they realize after multiple trials, yeah. multiple live experiments on unsuspecting subjects like yeah. ourselves, that no music actually is the best because then everybody's so like you're too awkward to start. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Like you're not comfortable yeah. enough to just like clock someone in the face yeah and it's um, like your mom took away your playstation because it's like you're playing too much gta right it's leading to you know true violence and grand theft auto <laughs> yeah. on the streets yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes yeah, so as I video think, games do as, as we they all do. know right, right, right but then sometimes when you take away the video game then you where do you put that violence right. um but no i think yeah so they discovered just a complete dead silence means everybody's so confused i'm not gonna stab someone if i feel kind of ashamed and embarrassed right i'm not reaching for my knife when i'm just like I don't feel comfortable in my own body. Exactly. I I think, yeah, that's when you realize like, hey, what am I doing? I I should probably throw this knife away. (laughs) I should probably surrender my um, unlicensed gun to the authorities. So I think on a macro scale, what you're saying is if we just get rid of music, if we cancel music. World peace. I yeah, is I attainable. realize that's counterintuitive. It's, it's counterintuitive because normally music is good. And then you celebrate by singing kumbaya and just a right. mass shooting erupts. Yeah, and then oh my god, we all lose it again. Yeah. Yeah, but I think listen, I mean, take it up with the Popeye's science department or whatever. <laughs> Look, they've been doing the they, work. They've been yeah, they've been working in a uh, you know, double blind controlled experiment and yeah. this was the outcome. So, we're now subjects of that. Yeah, and I mean, when you've lived in a world where you were being sold your own food from the guy who used to own it and you've like been a victim of mistreatment, I can understand them throwing all this money at trying to solve the violence issue. Yeah. That- yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Exactly. They were they were a victim for so long. Father. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's truly. I think we figured um, it out. Yeah. I think that is in fact what's, what's going, going on, on over, over there. there. Yeah. There there wasn't a lot else to talk about with the atmosphere, but we were the only ones in there for a little bit, 
and right. the, the lack of music definitely accentuated it. And like, I almost felt sympathetic for the employees, which we'll, we'll talk about more in service, but I'm yeah. just like, they have to go through a shift with no music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's horrible. Weird. But people did start filling in and a few people ate in, a few people would order and then wait for their food. And then I think there were some like people coming to pick up to go orders. Right, right. Stuff like that. I'm going to be honest, though. When I'm thinking about all the restaurants I've been to, I'm not recommending anyone subject themselves to this dine-in experience. Yeah, I see. Which isn't to say it's like miserable, Mm -hmm. but there's no focus on making it enjoyable. Yeah, it's definitely kind of more. I wonder if it's, you know, a little discour- it's like kind of discouraging because it was small, so mm-hmm. I wonder if it's a little bit like, listen, if you have to eat here that's fine, we have seats, but we're not here to, you know, let you set up shop. Yeah. They also don't have a bathroom. No, right. Yeah. So that makes it tough to stay there for hours on end yeah. <laughs> on top of the no music. So I'm not going to like I hated this or anything like that which is usually the criteria I need to give something two thumbs down. Mm. I I think I'm going to be like ever so merciful and just give it a one thumbs down. That is very close to two thumbs down, but Mm -hmm. you know, it was clean. Yeah. No, no, nothing went down. There wasn't no fights erupted, no stabbings. No, right. Thank God. No one uh, brandished a gun. Thanks to the no music. Mm -hmm. So yeah, one thumb down. Yeah, I I am also going to do one thumbs down. I think I'm a little closer to no thumbs at all or uh, middle only because I'm like, it was very clean and then good parking. (laughs) (laughs) You know, there was parking spots available. (laughs) (laughs) The manager wasn't fixing his car in in, at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking also just for like fast food places like that. The bar can be I'm kind of gritting on a curve a little bit. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Cool. Well, that's it for the atmosphere. Let's talk about the service. Service. There was one guy. One guy. I mean, there were people behind, but you Ooh, don't really yeah. see them. I. Mm-hmm. It's honestly so busy up there with all the signage that <laughs> I, I didn't clock right. where that slit was, where the kitchen oh, is. Oh, I know. Where does sign start and space start? Yeah. You know. Which it might have been like a concealing tactic yeah. of like. Don't look back here. Please read these signs. Hate, hate, hate. You just see a dude with actual Popeye the Sailor Man proportions, like giant forearms. <laughs> like, oh, God, and, like, what's happening back there? Yeah. They're experimenting on them. <laughs> just injecting them with like yeah. fryer grease and uh, stuff. Ooh, yeah. yeah, it could happen. So it was just this guy. And I, I don't know if he was a teenager. I don't think he was, but he definitely yeah. had like a very mm-hmm. youthful t- timidity to sure, him. Yeah, yeah. Youthful, yeah, seeming like to a little know, unsure a lot of, of himself. It seemed, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, he was he was the one to hold down the fort. All and interactions with people in silence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, no distracting music. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if he, you know, who made the call on the no music. You know, if it could have been that he doesn't like it because he's out there. You know, he's like, hey, I'm in charge out here, so no music today. I just want to be alone with my thoughts. I know, please. <laughs> yeah, food came out quick. He was receptive. He wasn't rude. No, yeah. I I have nothing to say really about the service. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was minimal interaction because, you know, it's really just ordering and then receiving food. Like, And then I, I also noticed there were quite a few. Uh, it was dead for a bit. But then when lunch hit a little bit, there are more people coming in and being a little more you know, wanting interaction. Oh, mine's to go. You know, I'm that yeah, one. Yeah. I'm that one. And there were. It seemed I like think, he was handling yeah, it just handling fine. It, yeah. Even though there were quite a few people. So that was cool. Yeah. But like, so when I think of a positive service experience, I think of, you know, chain restaurants, they have a leg up. Sure. They come to your They're table. With they you. develop a, a rapport. And I do have fast food experiences where they develop a rapport with mm-hmm. me and there is a little bit of banter. There was none of that. So I'm not going to go thumbs up on this, mm-hmm. but I also have nothing negative to say about the guy. Mm-hmm. So I think this is just thumbs right in the middle for mm-hmm. me. This is about as neutral of a service experience as you can get. Yeah, I would probably do like one thumb up because I'm like, it seemed like pretty, maybe sometimes you don't want too much interaction because you're like, I'm mm-hmm. just trying to get my food and go, you know, which is sometimes what I like a little bit. Mm-hmm. Sometimes if somebody's talking to me too much, I get like, oh, yeah, uh, What's uh, what do you what's what do you do? <laughs> what's the weather today? Uh, you, have, you have a nice lunch, too. I mean, ah, fuck. <laughs> so I, I do hate it when, when they say good. a thing that's specific to yeah. just you, like enjoy your meal. You too. You too. Oh, shit. Fuck. If and you work just, in a customer uh, facing job, just always say something where it's applicable for them to oh, say you too back know, to I you. It's uh-huh. a mercy. 
it's just, just say have I'm a nice so, day. I'm, I'm I'm just you know me and interactions with strangers. Yeah, it's always something weird going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not their fault at all. So yeah. yeah, for that reason, maybe I'm a little more like that's my style. But are you the type that when you get like a Lyft or an Uber, you want them to be silent? Oh, I mean, I I do chat with them, but I would say overall, I'm probably like not great at it. You know, like sure. I I sometimes maybe do the thing where I'm like, what question do I ask next? But you're so not bothered by it, right? I no, I'm not bothered by it. I just think it's just I'm gonna be maybe self conscious about it. Sure, so it sure. might bring a, a, a tad more social anxiety, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I, 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 I used mean, to drive for Lyft, and I was like, I really get uncomfortable at silent rides. Sure, you want to have a little. Yeah, I think it's, there's a good medium there, especially because you're really in the same box for well, and hours and there is a vulnerability uh-huh. to letting someone in your car. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! You're yeah. at the mercy, and you're operating the thing. Where I'm too. just like, I do kind of want to like feel you out. Yeah, yeah, and make sure like, they're not like gonna do something crazy. You yeah. know, that's a very good point, and and vice versa. There's like, okay, you know, you're at the as a passenger, you you're like, okay, you're not gonna drive us off a cliff, well, right? That's great. But I mean, there's a little more unknown from the driver's side, of course, because you're like, yeah. literally, it's your car. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, anyways, that's, <laughs> yeah, no thumbs for service on me, one thumb up for you. Hell yeah. Easy enough. Food. Yum, yummy. This is their selling point. You're going to Popeye's for food. No one's going to Popeye's <laughs> to be like, oh man, I love that, that vibe. Right, right, right. I, right. I love the, to just the environment. chat it up with, uh, yeah. random people. Yes. So, uh-huh. We got uh, a bit of a sampling. We got their signature chicken. We got their new wings. We got the sandwich. Uh, and then a few sides, yeah. coleslaw, mashed potatoes with gravy, uh, apple pie for dessert. Mm-hmm. And I will start with my drink. Yeah. I got the frozen lemonade. It was a strawberry lemonade. thought it was a little too sweet. And I, I guess I expected it to impress me. And it just it didn't taste special. Oh, maybe bummer. maybe it's just like instead of a strawberry, I would prefer like a raspberry lemonade. Oh. And it was just the berry itself didn't impress me. Mm. I don't know. But it just. It may not be, but it tasted this way a little on the artificial side. Oh, sure. So I could see that. And then the texture of like the frozen lemonade, it was like, you know, you know, when you get like crushed ice. Oh, oh too much. It, of it, that. It, it, yeah, it was like a mix of like crushed ice with the thing. So it, it didn't feel like it had this cohesive like texture of knowing what, what it wanted mm-hmm. to be. It's not quite an icy, but it's not quite just like a solid or, you know, liquid beverage. with right. ice. So right. it just kind of existed in this weird purgatory so i'm gonna give it a five out of ten cool you're not missing anything if you don't order it but you're not gonna like be disgusted if you do (laughs) it looked really good from the outside i feel like they maybe focused on that too much maybe yeah now you got a drink that was normally like i don't cover the drinks oh cool but sweet tea is a thing of the south yeah Mm -hmm. and when you're a popeyes and you're a louisiana kitchen and someone gets the sweet tea i do want to hear about it yeah 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 i I got the sweet tea which i think on the of all the signage was like cane sugar sweetened tea or something like yeah very a lot of words but basically just sweet tea um and yeah when i go to like chick-fil-a i'll get the sweet tea too so it's kind of nice to compare them but um i think what i realized i did wrong it's kind of self-served so i think i probably should have put more ice in it i just like fully was like it's probably gonna be cold or there's an, I, I don't know what oh, i was thinking but so it was, it was like actually room temp slightly w- yeah yeah, lukewarm yeah. Warm yeah a little lukewarm um or just not iced um and mm-hmm. so i would recommend getting the ice with it uh it was sweet and i i know that sweet tea is a certain thing you know i've had it in the south before as well and i and it's always going to run sweeter than like what people out, out here in california think of iced tea but i kind of would recommend doing a little i actually did top off a little bit with the unsweetened tea which you can do because mm. they're both self-serve so i guess you can just you know make do it the, your the ratio. ratio you want yeah so i think i would recommend going a little harder in the unsweetened to balance it i think also like a 70 helped. 30 maybe yeah yeah and it would have been helped i think if i had ice in it too so that <laughs> so that was my own fault if i were to rate it i mean i think i would probably go like yes like 7.5 8 out of 10 because really? you know it is it is like you're getting what you expect and it's just nice that they have it and you can kind of pair it with whatever right yeah okay the so tea pairing we'll go with our sides coleslaw mashed potatoes and gravy i mean this is just a styrofoam or like paper cup mm-hmm. full of potatoes it has a lid on it that looks sweaty yeah 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 <laughs> and sitting in there for a uh, like, enough to condense presentationally <laughs> not a sexy dish no no but you know, I like potatoes mm-hmm. just fine. 
it tastes like an instant. It, you know, it doesn't taste like they're like hand mashing and back or anything like that. It's just that it's a little too watery is the wrong word, but you know, it's not thick enough. It doesn't have that body, oh, that volume to yeah. it. I feel uh, the gravy's fine. Uh, overall, though, it's it's kind of a whatever thing. Six out of ten, mm -hmm. I'd say, on the mashed potatoes. That's but good. that's I mean that's against every food I've, I've ever had. So like, <laughs> okay, you know, yeah. yeah that's and tough. if five is right in the middle, it's it's a little better than average. Cool. But yeah, yeah. Uh, you tasted it right. Uh, I didn't taste that one actually. I only stuck to the coleslaw. You stuck to time. the coleslaw, which. But I I I glanced at it and I said that's mashed potatoes. <laughs> Uh, that I can identify, which is, which is good. That is good. That that's if you looked at bonus. it, you're like, what is that? Yeah, what you get? Ew. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the coleslaw looked very wet, soupy. It looked very mm. mayo heavy. Yeah, and I'm I'm the kind of guy who I'm like I really like just kind of a light amount mm. of mayo on a coleslaw. Oh, right. I like a more solid than liquid coleslaw, and so this was a. I was surprised I had a little bit more heft when I t mm. tasted it than I expected it to, but it was still a little too mayo-y for me. Uh, I just went five and a half out of ten. Mm -hmm. It's coleslaw. It still tasted mm -hmm. just fine. It was a consistency thing for me that had it felt more maybe real or substantive, yeah. it could have gained an extra point maybe, cool. but five and a half out of ten as it stands. Yeah, I, I agree. I think I think the maybe the issue was like, it was mayo heavy, but it was honestly like watery. You know, mm. I think it was more. You know, it could be just water from whatever. Uh, the the veggies themselves, the veggies were were kind of cut small too, so I think that makes it more soupy. Yeah. But anyway, I think I'm more in the like four range. Oh, four, okay. Five. So like the, um, the low like end of average. Yeah, which is like you know, and coleslaw is hard, but I think it was kind of a little less than I thought. When you say it's be. hard, like it's hard to make good. Yeah, and I think like you know, what's a great coleslaw? I don't even know if I I don't even know if the best coleslaw would score a ten. You know, in no, my no, I, in my book, so <laughs> so maybe it has it's a cap because of that. It has yeah. a cap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and then the the forgotten side, but how could you forget? It's oh. the best of the three. The biscuits. You're get you're you're at a southern joint. Biscuits mm -hmm. are going to be a thing. Uh, I went to Cracker Barrel not that long ago, mm. and I actually thought their biscuits were, I gave them a 10 out of 10. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. I don't know if I sh should have, but, you know, sometimes. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah, you're feeling generous. Sometimes you're just into it, Hell you know. Yeah. You just Love feel that. it. Uh -huh. This didn't hit that bar, but it, it these were pleasant, especially for something that's probably pretty processed. Yeah, I was surprised. It had like a good mixture of like there was like a saltiness to it that mm. uh, was like just the right amount. Somewhere between fluffy and hard, mm. but not hard in a stale way. Right. Hard in like a substantive, substantive yeah, way. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it was working for me well enough. I didn't put anything on it. Like I, I didn't butter yeah, it. Didn't. They don't. They didn't give butter. Usually, I would maybe put like a honey or something. Mm. Uh, and I just was too lazy to stand up and get honey. But I don't think I heard it. I thought that the biscuit yeah. was it was good on its own. I I went eight and a half. Cool. Out yeah. Of 10. No, yeah, I I also really liked it. I think they're kind of a nice size too, not too big, kind of a nice addition. And they're enough to literally be a side. Yes, yes, like, yes. They it don't have dominate. To take up the whole meal. Yeah. yeah, great point. Felt buttery. Yeah, definitely that um, good texture when I kind of broke it apart. Uh, so yeah, I'm like I think eight for sure. It was it was a pleasant surprise because I kind of forgot that they served that. Yeah. And I, I, I literally forgot too, and I'm like, wait, this is like one of the things that they're I guess known so. for. Yeah, makes sense. And like, gosh, biscuits and chicken, like, great combo. So yeah. you kind of have to have that. But yeah, I would expect because I just know how difficult those are to make, and how everybody says, oh, you know, there's only good, one good way to do it, and it takes That's all bullshit. day. Da, da, da. People are too uh -huh. precious about their okay. methodology. <laughs> and you know, I don't, I didn't grow up with anyone who knew how to make biscuits. So uh, my palate for biscuits is not necessarily the same as somebody who maybe does know what homemade biscuits are like. Yeah. But I mean, I'm I'm, I'm just forgetting. in the camp of good is good. Yeah. I've had homemade biscuits that suck. Sure. So like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take that, auntie. No, <laughs> <laughs> they know who they are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So next we'll go with Popeye's introduced wings. Mm. Not that long ago, mm -hmm. uh, which honestly kind of surprises me. Like, that they didn't have it longer. That they didn't have it. I'm mean, like, you can order a wing as part of like, oh, I want like three pieces. I'll get a right. wing, a breast, and a thigh. But like just getting chicken wings in the traditional sense is kind of a new thing. And they had 
like six or so different sauces that yep. they would be tossed in that you could choose from. And we got the honey lemon pepper wings. These, I'll let you give the comparison that you. Oh, that at the time that I at said. At the time. Yeah, I felt like they kind of had a orange chicken element to them because they were too sweet it was weird yeah because i think what i when i picked it because i picked the oh let's try the honey lemon pepper and they kind of have the the spiciness scale like that you would see at any kind of place right somewhere in the middle slightly more mild i think yeah but i was just recalling like oh lemon pepper like that's such a popular wing and as a rub I yeah. love lemon pepper. So I thought it was going to be a rub. I thought so too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was more, but of it, a but syrup. it was like pick your sauce, and so. Oh, but it was sure. an oversight on both. Like I, I Again, also expected too many the signs. rub. <laughs> they yeah. had so many signs. Maybe I would have picked up on that. If detail. any of them were clear. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know, I know. I was like taking in too much information. So yeah, so I guess it, it was more of like a glazed syrupy kind of feel. Um, so it made that lemon thing. It was just like kind of I what you're saying about it. the lemonade. It's like a little artificial. Yeah. Taste. It actually reminded me, I just had some like pasta from Trader Joe's that was in this like set that I think people will know if they know Trader Joe's. It's called the Panoply of Pasta. Have you heard of this? <laughs> no. There's like five different pastas. It's kind of like a gift. So I think I got it for Christmas. And then one of the middle ones was like a yellow pasta, but like a lot of pasta is yellow. So I just threw it in. I thought it would be like any other pasta, but it turned out to be like lemon flavored. And it mm. didn't like it because it was like, this is just tastes like artificial flavoring. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of the same flavoring I think that was in this. Yeah, it was, it yeah. was too sweet. And the honey made it too sticky. Yeah. And like the quality of the chicken was not on par with like yeah. their normal it was just signature classic chicken. Yeah, it just it was different in a way that wasn't working for me. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go three out of ten mm-hmm, mm-hmm. on these wings. I I don't recommend them. Maybe we went wrong with the sauce and we just got one that was a little on the too sweet right. side. Maybe if we went for a spicier, like a honey barbecue yeah, or a honey another... mustard, maybe, you know, I'm willing to try them again. But these, as as they were, they're not bringing me back. No, yeah, I, I wouldn't order that specific one again. Yeah, I think I'm also at three. That seems about right. I, I kind of also, yeah, I wonder if the chicken, like, they introduce the wings and they're like, we can use the kind of shittier chicken here. Oh, you know, yeah. the like more throwaways that we couldn't sell as the signature chicken or yeah. whatever. And hey, it's a great business model. We know Popeyes, they know how to run the business. Gotta get rid of that. <laughs> That chicken yeah. on the run. Yeah, the weird tiny, yeah, chicken on the run couldn't run very far. Um, And so... This did feel like the chicken run. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just the Ooh. way it just, the Especially honey dripping syrup, off. Yeah, like, you're mm. like, oh, this is not going to sit well. So, yeah, I wonder if that's why that's kind of their model for the wings mm-hmm. department is like, not as great chicken, but we slather it in sauce so you can't really tell. And who cares? You're going to be like eating them at a, you know, watching uh, like a game or something. So, who, you yeah, know, don't pay attention. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. This is definitely a don't look at me. Don't look at it. Don't look well, at me. I'm hideous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just eat me in your dark shame. <laughs> yeah. You you hang your head when you eat these. That's mm-hmm. that's how they're meant to be. Consumed. Yeah. 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 So then we got the signature chicken. This is just like the thing that they would use to compete with KFC. I didn't go with the Cajun seasoned one specifically okay. because we got the spicy yeah. version of the sandwich. Mm-hmm. And so I, I wanted like the all right, what's the mild version? What's the the spicier one? And yeah, this this felt like a step up from a KFC, but it really didn't feel like that much higher of a step up. Yeah. It was juicy and crispy. The the skin was actually I thought the breading was nice. really yeah. enjoyable. I thought it was a little too greasy, which mm-hmm. I mean it's fried chicken, it comes with the territory, but there still is a spectrum there. And and for me it was yeah, it was a little too greasy. I went 6 out of 10. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm not hating it. Yeah, yeah. I would get it again, but uh, yeah, it could be better. Yeah, I think I, I, um, you know, I tried it with. Let's see, the honey mustard that was good with it. I think. Oh yeah, we had we had sweet heat. Oh yeah, honey sweet. mustard, and oh, uh, the Mardi Gras, yeah, Mardi mustard, Gras mustard, which is like a Dijon. Is. Okay, okay, yes. Yeah, Dijon. it had like the more like chunky mustard. Okay, yeah, the seeds looking things. Um, yeah, so I tried this with the honey mustard. I think specifically, yeah, it, it was definitely. Um, I think the one thing I think I like the batter that is lighter. I, I tend to like that style better. The one thing I compare it to that is you know much better, of course, is um, canes, raisin canes. Um, where Do you think Raising chicken, Cane's is much better? In my head, it is, but they have similar batter. I don't have a lot of love for Raising Cane's. Okay. I, I don't like hate it, but okay. I, they opened I one in Burbank mm-hmm. and the the line. Sure. They're big right now. Was not. I was just like, this 
food doesn't equal no, this. No, no, never, never. I don't get that. I think there's such a craze for it right now, too. It's very trendy, mm -hmm. you know, because they're popping up in more locations. So people who have never had it before, like I hadn't had it, you know, what growing up or anything. Yeah. Um, it was kind of like this lore of like, ooh, let's try it out. And they are all really nice right now because they're shiny and new. Yeah. And I do think I've I've had it in the right situations where I've been like very hungry and been like, oh, this just hits the spot, you know. But I would say they have comparable batter, which I kind of like, you know, it's this kind of thinner thing and it um, it doesn't overwhelm. It's not like so it doesn't like hurt. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you want you want your food not to hurt. But I think this chicken was like not quite as good. And maybe it's because, you know, I got, oh, there's a different, you know, maybe that specific piece wasn't mm -hmm. as good. But Anyway, I still thought it was it was quite nice um, for what it was. So I, I'm probably like 6.5. 6.5. Mm -hmm. Let's move on up to uh -oh. what I would call the star of the show. Yeah, the sandwich to die for the or to kill for. The spicy chicken sandwich <laughs> that has caused fights, that has yeah. caused an infrastructure change in the business model oh of God. Popeyes, that people have driven their cars yeah. Wrecked their off of BMWs. roads for. <sighs> Is it worth that? It was pretty damn good. It was, it was pretty, pretty damn, damn good. good. I will say I Would also... you kill someone? Oh, man. No. All right. All right. What were you saying? <laughs> no. I Listen, I get it, though. I think it's... I didn't eat breakfast in anticipation, and it was the first thing we ate, and it was yeah. so nice. Yeah. And the, the spicy one specifically was just... A, the right amount of heat where I just felt like I was getting something, but it wasn't overwhelming. Yeah. You know, the pickle, I almost dropped the pickle and I put it back in. And it, I mean, it only went on the little plate, but I was glad I put the pickle back in because it was really good with the pickle. You know, I found it funny that they don't have knives here. Right. And this sandwich was tender enough that with the spork, yeah. the only utensil that they have in this establishment, I was able to cut it in half. By stabbing perfectly. it repeatedly with a spork. And you did it perfectly. I I, I looked away and, I, and it was already cut. You just and had it was, a half sandwich. So you're yeah. like, this looks like. I was like, looks like you had a knife, man. Yeah. Maybe you maybe they don't have knives because people were stabbing each other inside of Popeye's. So <laughs> then, you know, they realized we can't provide. These yeah, weapons. but a spork to the jugular. I mean, shh, don't tell anyone. But yeah, you're right. That would be. Close the stab painful. gap. Oh, hey. That's from the special. It's Thank a line you. from her special. Thank you for watching. Fun to everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, yeah, I think I think uh, that's a good testament to the chicken. Yeah. Tender, sporkable. Yeah. And, and like the sauce balance, too. So oh, many yeah. things are either oversauced or undersauced. Yeah. And I thought they know the right amount to smear on the on the bun, on the chicken, yeah. on whatever. The chicken itself, tender, flavorful. This is great. Like yeah. fast food. Not every place has an item that I would call great. Mm -hmm. Popeye's has what I would call a great chicken sandwich. Is it the best I've ever had? No. Even in the fast food or fast casual world, I would prefer like a Dave's hot chicken. Cool. I think they're delicious. Their seasoning combination is just more to my preference. So this isn't like a perfect thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm still going to go nine out of ten mm -hmm. on the Popeye's chicken sandwich. Yeah, I think I'm a nine. Yeah, I yeah. think I'm a nine as well. I think it's just it's right there. I know. Yeah, I have maybe I mean, I don't know. Like, you know, I do love a Howlin' Rays. I know they're very popular and they do the crazy thing. Uh -huh. So I've tried them once. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't love it. Mm -hmm. But I hear everyone say they're the best chicken sandwich in L.A. But my one time I had them is meaningless because I was working as a as an office PA on a movie. And I was tasked with, hey, go drive to, I, I think we went, I went to the one in Pasadena. Go pick up mm -hmm. from Howlin' Ray's. You know, it's going to be a late night. Go people. go grab for the office, like five people or whatever. Okay. And I don't know why. I mean, maybe it's just that manly urge to be an idiot sometimes. Mm -hmm. I was like, I can do the hottest one. So I got my Howlin' Ray's sandwich howling okay that's like the hottest one and then you can qualify for like the even hotter yes. one after okay hell yeah yeah wh whatever the the like top the one, one was you can get. Yeah. this was five years ago four years ago at this point i was just at my desk everyone's eating their sandwich being like oh this is so good and i'm just like yeah this is good and i'm dying oh no but i'm trying to keep the poker like, face yeah, i'll be here tomorrow morning too <laughs> <laughs> right on time. So that's my Holland Ray's experience. And I, I oh, hear I hear yeah. they're fantastic. And I, I want to go get again. I the hottest one. Yeah. Well, OK. So then and then I hear there's an even hotter one where you have to like sign a waiver and you have to prove that. That's you've what eaten they the say. Other one. 
That's oh, what is they that just say. A marketing gimmick? Well, like uh-huh. uh, Dave's to order their hottest one. There's apparently a waiver. Oh, OK. But they didn't give it to me when I ordered it. Oh, my God. Well, so. you can sue them now for all their worth and then own them. <laughs> I did. Oh. Actually, there was a uh, there's like a hot sauce store that I like called Pepper Palace. Mm. <laughs> they're they're I mean, they're kind of a chain, but like there's one okay. at like Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. Oh, cool. uh-huh. Uh, I know there's one in like the downtown area of like Arrowhead. Nice. They're around. I went to a Pepper Palace and they have a it's like an eyedropper of hot sauce of like a hot sauce extract. Oh, God. And you just put a drop and you have to sign a waiver and it's seven million Scoville units. Oh, God. Which, oh. do you know? Like, I mean, I don't roughly, think I know the exact translation, but no, that's a lot. Yeah. Like a habanero is like. 300,000. Oh, yeah. A ghost pepper is like 1 million. Oh, no, no, no. no. So to have an a- extract that's 7 million. No, no, no. It was 10 minutes of agony. Tough. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> so you put it on something or did you just Yeah, I think uh th- they may have had like a little cracker or something. I don't oh, I don't okay, remember yeah. what the thing Yeah, is. like the chip, that... the hot chip challenge or whatever. Yeah. I like doing that, like spice sure. stuff, because like everyone I've had, I'm like, yeah, I can handle it. And it's I, I think there is something to like the. The challenge nature oh, of it, yeah, I don't understand challenge eating from a quantity standpoint, like, oh, like oh, the right. hot dog eating contest or like, burger, uh-huh. yeah, eat a six pound pizza Burrito, by yourself yeah. in 30 minutes. I'm like, why? Right, right. That's not worth it. I don't get it. But the the heat, I do actually, I understand the yeah. psychology of why you might venture into that. It, cool. It's it's putting yourself through a test. Yeah, yeah. You really test your limits. I mean, it's the whole thing of like your brain thinks you're on fire. So then you kind of get some euphoria from it. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, there is very right? much like a crystallizing moment at some point through that nice. where you're like, <laughs> I'm watching myself from above yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, My brain is like giving me some soothing like chemicals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to die. Yeah. Um, no, much respect. I, yeah, I, I think if you did go for a more mild howl and raise, yeah, you would enjoy it. Well, I, I don't know. Sure, I think I would too. <laughs> Anyways, Popeye's was not that hot. <laughs> it wasn't that hot. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think that makes sense. They're so wide, you know, but it was widespread. Delicious. But yeah, yeah, it added the right amount of kick to kind of like give yeah. you something. And then, of course, we close it off with a little tasty dessert. We got the, the apple pie, mm-hmm. like the little pocket apple pie thing mm-hmm. that, uh, McDonald's just used to do better. McDonald's kind of changed. Did they change theirs? Oh. Well, because like, I know that they used to be like the, like, Con- concealed all around like mm. like this one was right and then at some point mcdonald's put like a lattice crisscross in there uh. so it can breathe i guess and so it cools off a little bit and the pie filling starts to be more of like a jelly than a pie filling Oh, okay and you're not and into that you know and then as yeah. like as we've gotten older as time has passed and like food innovations have like happened in a way where we can now mm. put faker food in things. Oh, yeah. I, you can taste that like, yeah. oh, this has changed. They're substituting stuff. I mean, I feel like the lattice to me when I heard you say that, I was like, oh, l- less dough. You know, they can yeah. like save. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But whatever they were doing from like 99 to like 04 was peak McDonald's apple pie. This didn't measure up to that, but I did like the the full cinnamon sugar coating around it. I wouldn't say that I had it when it was at the peak of its warmth, so I'm not going to knock it for, for that. Sure. <laughs> but tasty, not a standout compared to others in its category, like mm. the classic McDonald's. But even McDonald's doesn't measure up to classic McDonald's. I'm going to go seven out of ten. Okay, yeah, yeah. delightful bite. Happy I had it, mm-hmm. but not, yeah, you know, not crazy. Yeah, I. So I, you know, maybe I'm going to come off a little pretentious because I've been Ooh. watching lots of Top Chef and those types of shows. But one thing I even though I liked the the sentiment of adding the cinnamon sugar coating, it kind of made it hard to eat because then it's like you're touching that with your fingers. And then mm. if you're touching other things, you know, we're in a Popeye's with no bathroom. Like, you know, it's so not you're thinking it of be like the, the sensory experience. Yeah. And I mean, I guess you're going in with fried chicken. So you're touching fried stuff anyway. But this is not a place you go was... to walk out with clean hands. No. Yeah. And that I mean, specifically, too, it's just like it's just right on your fingers because it's not really like I, I feel like what I would have liked better is if it just had a regular you know pastry coating Solid, yeah but then on the inside you know there was cinnamon Those sugar in there in. yeah with the apples or whatever but 
Um, on the outside, I was like, I don't know if this is adding much. And then I'm just like, it's all just falling off kind of as I'm picking mm -hmm. it up. So I think I'm more in the like five out of 10, you know, okay. it's like simple, um, but like maybe Harmless, not my favorite. didn't impress, setup. didn't disappoint. Just, yeah. Yeah. Like, like could have maybe harder to eat than I would have wanted it to be. Uh, yeah, I'm more of a flavor above all else type. Okay. I don't think of the sensory. Uh, it's totally valid. Well, yeah, too. I, and I honestly hadn't thought of it until I started watching Top Chef. And that's like a thing they mm. judge on. And I'm like, yeah, like I've had burgers that I loved, but like mm. they're in yeah. a pile on my plate right. by the end of it. But I still think they're delicious. Cool. So I have no problem calling them great. Mm -hmm. But then you take someone there and they're like, this is like falling apart. Yeah. Yeah. How do I eat this? And yeah. It's just like, I don't know. It's still tasty. Though. Right. Right. Yeah. Ideally, you can scoop it up and have a rally bite that keeps it all together <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah no for sure i think um, i'm also the type that'll like lift a plate and just fork the oh, things yeah my... yeah yeah that's a good i have method. no dignity no no <laughs> so... and that food does not require it yeah. so that's good so when i'm putting everything together for popeyes the food i if if i just had the chicken sandwich this is getting a positive score but there's mm -hmm. so many things in here that are mediocre which as I've stated, mediocre does not mean bad. No. Yeah. Mediocre means baseline. Mediocre, right. It is food. You will leave satiated. You're not going to be mad. Mm -hmm. But you may not be like, yeah, that was the best thing I could have had right now. I'm going to go thumbs in the middle on the food for Popeyes. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah. No, I think I'm for for Popeyes food. Yeah. I think the food was the best element of the three categories. So mm -hmm. I, I'm like one thumbs up. You're one thumb up. Uh-huh. And the strong performers mm -hmm. are strong. Sure. And then it's a bunch of average. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. And a lot of signage to and then, like, confuse you. A couple, a couple disappointments, but, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, it, it's fine. So, yeah. So we got to put all this together into a number so that we can give Popeye's a score so that it can go up on the tchotchke of mediocrity behind me, that scale of every restaurant oh, yeah. I've ever been to mm -hmm. and see where it falls. But before we can do that, Sierra, you're a first timer on this podcast. You you haven't done what I've done. You haven't been to this is like, what, 80 ish oh, restaurants. My yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. My system is calibrated. Yours is not. So we got to take a second and we got to stop by the Calibration Station. <laughs> calibration Station. Comparing this meal to the best of the worst. Calibration Station. Chugga, 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 choo, choo. So to, to properly calibrate your scale mm -hmm. to to get off at the calibration station we need to know what is your zero out of 10 dining experience what is your 10 out of 10 dining experience so that you can take those both into consideration when you give popeyes a number so right would you rather start with the good or start with the bad i'll start with the good uh you know it's a little uh, I would say what you would expect. I am thinking of all restaurants and, you know, do love to go to some really fancy places for special occasions, you know. So we went to this restaurant in the Sahara in Las Vegas. I don't even know what the restaurant itself was called. Yeah, yeah. Was in that hotel. Sure. Yeah, it was just like, I think, Spanish style tasting menu. Got a bunch of little like cool uh, molecular gastronomy type things mm. going on. Great cocktails to pair with it. The stuff that I experience. would call like conceptually bullshit. Where, sure. where it's just uh -huh. like, OK, <laughs> but like it tastes but, amazing. Exactly. Like, I think I was also pretty skeptical where it's like, look, if it looks cool, doesn't matter. I want to make sure I'm full. Right. And also getting something delicious. But I think it, it hit all, all those things. boxes. And, you know, they do that very carefully where you're supposed to, you know, you get little pieces at a time. But like after however many courses, even though one course could be like one bite, you know, it's like you it are supposed up. to be full. Yeah, yeah. by the end. And, and I was. So, yeah. Did, did everything hit with you? I mean, I'm sure there were some things that I like don't remember and therefore were not as memorable. But like it's probably one of my most memorable meals. And sure. I think when you're spending that much money, you know, I think there's totally an argument to be made of like, and then you just eat it. So what, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I think that because I remember it so well, I'm like, that was super worth it because it's just like a really special memory. Like I always, yeah. you know, things I can eat and then compare to it. Oh, like, oh, what if I tried that? Because I remember I liked that ingredient, you know? Right. So I think it opened up a world of food to me that I really um, still draw from. So, And what, yes. what I also uh -huh. like about that being your answer for it being your 10 mm -hmm. is 
I think it highlights the fact that, I mean, it's the entire gimmick for my show of like, look, we could have just gotten Popeye's to go and talked about the food. Sure. But I I think that a restaurant should offer an experience. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, you know. It's the full, like, you, you know, it's the service. It's the atmosphere. Yeah. There was music, let's just say. It, in it's this. even the signage. Like, the yeah, font yeah. that you choose to use mm -hmm. is the, like, that's what starts people's yeah journey with your restaurant you're right you're right it's the full thing and i mean that's what people are dreaming up when they're designing their restaurants right yeah. it's like from start to finish so so yes i think this the food on its own wouldn't be my favorite or it would stick out but it's the whole the whole package yeah. yeah all right so now let's hear that zero okay so this one is where I think it just is a childhood memory of like stress. So I think that doesn't help. Like I think right. if I were an adult who could handle it a little bit more, like maybe I would be fine with this place. But essentially it was a Denny's. We went to as a family when we were younger. And um, it was just really like, a, it was like a hectic day. And again, this is the sort of thing where... Outside factors, like even before you got to the Denny's, it was a hectic day? Or oh, Denny's I see, made it No, hectic. Denny's, I think I'm just, I was just thinking Denny's okay, okay. was hectic. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'm sure it was a hectic day because like, you know, life, childhood. <laughs> Tell Am me I about right? it. <laughs> <laughs> but it sticks out because I remember we got like a couple, you know, we probably had fine meal for the most part, but there was like maybe we ordered milkshakes or something exciting. And as a kid, that was like a big deal. Oh my God, we're getting right. milkshakes. Oh. And everybody was fine service wise. But I think our, our waitress, she was maybe new and a little nervous or something. So when she brought out the milkshake and again, hectic Denny. So she's probably super overwhelmed. And this is like not a knock at her or whoever was working there. I think it was just like crazy. So she like brought out the the milkshakes and then like accidentally like threw it at us <laughs> or dropped it and then they bounce and it's like it's the cool old fashioned milkshake where it's like in the metal thing. Oh. So it's like a lot of milkshake I and guess. it's loud. It's loud. Like, ding, 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 ding. I know. Yeah. Like slot machine situation. Like milkshake. And we were like laughing because it was so ridiculous and it was fine. But we were like oh okay yeah you know like I guess she'll she'll bring out another one or or Did she drop whatever. it on you or on the table? or on the floor i mean it got on everybody but I, I don't think it was directly at us it was like on the table it wasn't first. like a sitcom Bounce. moment where it's like Whoa, Whoa, and, yeah. And just, yeah. oh yes that would have it wasn't been like a nickelodeon better yeah sliming yeah. situation <laughs> yeah i know i know that's a classic yeah it was more of like a bounce like kind of yeah, whatever yeah. and she was like oh no so sorry you know obviously very overwhelmed and we're like oh it's okay it's okay i think we were kind of laughing and she left and then i guess we cleaned up you know, with paper towels or whatever. And then she didn't come back. And then we like didn't like know ever? what to do. Like she went to the store to get cigarettes. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> no, kind of. And then the manager like came out and started yelling at us like we <laughs> <laughs> like just I, victim blaming i think she had had a really hard day and that was like the final straw yeah. right which i would also feel the same way I'm like oh my god you know this is just so much right yeah. but i think the manager might have interpreted it as like we got mad at her and made her cry oh so then he was yelling at us like what do you guys want from us and we're like oh we just wanted our dino nuggets and, <laughs> <we wanted> our <laughs> and like, of all the things another milkshake if that's possible but it was just like kind of, oh, okay, miscommunication. There was also like so many people that I think he was in a rush. Like, yeah. can you guys make this easier on me by either leaving come on, come on, come on. or like, yeah, 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 what do you want? So there was, yeah, there was sort of like a miscommunication. A frenetic energy. We were, yeah, immediately the, the, the villains in the situation. So I think we just got like nuggets to go. And then that was it. But we kind of got like ousted. And it's like a childhood, <laughs> like formative core memory for I, you. Well, yeah. And I definitely was like excited because Denny's was kind of like a fun place to go yeah. you know for a kid it's like big bright ooh, yellow get... playful sign red yeah. font like yeah red font oh my god yeah warm colors no blue chicken you get nuggets and maybe a milkshake uh, yeah. maybe because I didn't get the milkshake it was sad because I was such a sweet tooth but yes I'd say that's my zero all right between those two experiences <laughs> lies Popeye's Louisiana kitchen from today the specific experience we had, <laughs> no music, a good sandwich. Yeah, delicious. Good biscuits, a lukewarm sweet tea, <laughs> too much signage. All of this put together, you have to assign Popeyes a number. Final rating. <laughs> 
this is interesting because I think I am probably waiting atmosphere a little bit more than I should be. Right. But I think I'm going to say 4.33. I don't think that's unfair. It's a little low, but it's a fast food place. Yeah. They are just not the dining experience of a chain restaurant or a mom and pop, right. like a diner. Put me in a diner and you are, you already start with two extra points. Like mm. I just I love the vibe Good of a diner, diner so much. Yeah. I'm a little bit higher than mm-hmm. you. And I think it's the strength of the chicken sandwich. And like I really did like the like mosaic tiling and those like colorful oh, light yeah. fixtures and mm-hmm. stuff like and it was clean. Uh, still, this wasn't impressive. <laughs> I'm not recommending anyone <laughs> eat inside a Popeye's, uh, but I'm going to go. Four point seven one. Mm. Not too much higher. Sure. But enough to we both have our own differing thoughts. Totally. But what is clear is that this belongs in that four to five range. Mm -hmm. So when you put our scores together, Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen goes up on the tchotchke Uh of mediocrity Mm -hmm. at two point at two one hundredths of a point higher than your zero Denny's a 4.52 less than mediocre not quite as good as Cracker Barrel that feels fair yeah it really does I mean it's in good company in that kind of zone I feel it, yeah, that's just kind of I, I I feel like we nailed it. I, I was feeling a little scared about the four point three three, but I'm kind of like looking at the board. I'm like, yeah, I and I also I think I was thinking too, no bathroom. Yeah, that could be that's a tough sell. Today was fine, but on another day could be rough. Like Popeye's isn't the place where you go and you have bowel security. No. <laughs> Chicken on the run? No. Chicken on the run is not a place where you're like, I know for certain I'm not going to need right. the restroom here. Right. And it's, it's a toss up. It's tough. Like, I, you know, there's not a lot of places around nearby maybe to to knock on the door and ask for mercy. Yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely playing with fire. But I, I love that for the staff. They don't have to clean a bathroom yeah. or protect a bathroom, which is a lot of work. All right. Well, because it wasn't a 5.00, it means that next week, I got to go somewhere else. And to, so sorry about that. No, no worries. Look, the, the search goes on. Search goes this on. is my lot in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hey, no good deed. And hey, occasionally I get like nicer places. I mean, there's some okay. nicer chains. You, you never know. I don't think so. I don't know what this bowl is going to offer me. Oh. But we got to go into the you must bowl to see where I am going to oh, go so next you. week. I'm going to draw and we'll see what I'm doing. Okay. Fingers crossed. All right. Next week on the Fine Dining Podcast, I will be going to. I probably should have started that sentence when I like already had the thing kind of unfurled. Fix it in post. No, we're going to we're going to live in this. (laughs) Houston's restaurant. Oh, wow. I've heard of that. It actually is one of the nicer places I could go. Oh, good. Houston's restaurant. It's kind of had a resurgence lately. I, I feel like it's kind of the hot spot to go. I hear a lot of celebrities go. Do you really hear that? Kind of. Oh. Or like, yeah, I feel like it's just in the zeitgeist more. I'll be going for lunch on a Thursday. Oh, so that's when all the celebrities we'll there. see who. Say hi to George Clooney for me. Sierra, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me on, Michael. Popeyes. Thanks for putting yourself through Ugh. the experience of not just Popeyes, but my podcast. No, it was a delight. <laughs> I loved it. And Popeyes was just uh, added bonus. But yeah, I'm glad I could be a part of this um, ever-growing journey. Scale. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and tell people where they can find you and yes. whatever you want them to check out. So yeah, you can uh, find me online. <laughs> I'm, I'm at Sierra Cato, K-A-T-O-W on Instagram, yeah. where I post for shows and stuff. I have a new special out, hour-long special called Funt, F-U-N-T. If you Google Sierra Cato Funt, it'll be streaming on Amazon Prime when this is out. You know, if you like that, you can also watch, um, I have an episode coming out on PBS. Uh, it's a show called The Roots of Comedy hosted by a uh, hilarious comedian Jesus Trejo, where he goes around and talks to different comedians in their hometowns, asks them what they do, uh, like where they get their comedy from. So 
So mine was Los Angeles. I'm from right here. It's streaming on PBS app. Uh, it's on PBS channel. came out already. But if you go on to PBS.org, it will be there. And also, I have a fun Top Chef slash Master Chef podcast that I do with a couple of friends called TV Chef Fantasy League. Um, it comes out, you know, once a week. Um, you can find that at TV Chef Fantasy League uh, Instagram. Thank awesome. You. Well, we didn't find the most mediocre restaurant in America, so you can follow me more on my journey as I continue to look on Instagram and TikTok at Fine Dining Podcast. You can email me any thoughts you have, hate mail, fan mail, neutral mail. Yes. <laughs> Fine Dining Podcast at gmail.com. Visit the website, get on my mailing list, check out my Patreon. Got Sarku Japan's episode dropping today. It's already available. And yeah, we didn't find the most mediocre restaurant in America. The search does, in fact, continue. We'll see you next time. Have, Have a, a fine, fine day. day. The search continues. We still need the perfect five. The search continues. Like and subscribe. The search continues. Our journey did not conclude. The mother and search continues. Write us an iTunes review. And hey. While you're at it, why don't you go ahead and make it five stars, huh? Come on. Follow us on TikTok. The same on Instagram. All the socials at Fine Dining Podcast. We have a website, FineDiningPodcast.com. Buy our t-shirts. Then put them on. And don't forget, you can always suggest where we go next. Okay! We're going to find it. Mediocrity. The search continues. See you next week. <coughs> Hurt my throat a little. Have a fine day.